don't you take it over this counter right here and somebody will be right with you. Okay, thanks. Sure. Hi, I'm James. Welcome to our automotive product store. As an employee here, I'm responsible for properly handling used lead acid batteries returned by customers for recycling. After collecting these batteries from our customers, it's important for us to follow a few key steps. Over the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through proper handling techniques so you can ensure your own safety, the safety of other employees, and make the environment a little safer. The first key step to handling lead acid batteries is to complete an inspection of the battery to check for damage. During the inspection, there are several key factors to keep in mind. Before handling damaged batteries or associated spill material, make sure you wear the appropriate personal protection equipment provided by your employer. You also want to place damaged batteries that aren't visibly leaking in a strong, clear poly bag of at least 6 mil in thickness and secure it with an adjustable plastic tie. If a battery is visibly leaking, contain it separately using a non-metal, acid-resistant container and make sure the container is capable of containing any leaking acid. And be sure to clean up any spilled acid using the appropriate procedures and equipment such as a spill kit which can be provided by your employer. Manage cleanup residues according to your employer's instructions. After inspection, the last major step is to prevent any additional damage to return batteries. It's critical that you handle all used batteries with the same responsible care as new batteries. So, when handling used batteries, keep the batteries upright at all times. Don't tip them over on their side or turn them upside down. Don't throw or drop batteries. As soon as possible, transport collected batteries to the used battery storage area. Put batteries down carefully on the designated pallet in the used battery storage area, including those batteries in plastic bags. And keep metal objects away from the batteries because they may touch the terminals and cause the battery to short circuit. All in all, if you inspect batteries right away and handle used batteries properly, you help to ensure your own safety, create a safer workplace, and improve the environment. Hi, it's me again, and welcome back to our automotive product shop. Here at the store, we work with our customers to recycle lead acid batteries on a daily basis. One of the key steps in the recycling process is preparing used batteries for shipment. As the shipper, we're responsible for properly preparing the load of used batteries for transportation. Unless you comply with the requirements we're going to address, you would have to handle used batteries as fully regulated hazardous materials, requiring labeling, marking, placarding, and hazmat shipping papers. In addition, a hazmat registration, hazmat driving routes, and use of a hazmat certified driver would be required. To be exempt from these requirements, lead acid batteries shipped by highway or rail must be properly loaded or braced to prevent damage and short circuits in transit. One way to be in compliance with the U.S. Department of Transportation regulations is to prepare a secure, stretch-wrapped pallet load of used batteries that is no more than three layers high. You also need to use cardboard separators above and below each layer of batteries. Let's review some other key specifications for the load. Confirm the maximum pallet size is either 44 inches by 48 inches or 40 inches by 48 inches. Confirm the maximum weight per pallet is approximately 3,600 pounds. Use only pallets constructed with a minimum of three bottom boards and ensure that they are durable enough to handle the battery load. Be certain there are no exposed nails on the pallet that could puncture the batteries. Use GMA grade A or GMA grade B pallets. When possible, stack return batteries using pallets provided with new battery shipments and only return used lead acid batteries. So, now that you have a handle on the general requirements, let's learn how we can properly prepare a load for shipment. All right, step one, stack the pallet. Load batteries upright, one layer high, on top of a shipping pallet covered with cardboard. Be sure to pack the batteries tightly together to avoid shifting and position them so that no batteries overhang the cardboard and pallet. Top posts must be positioned toward the outside of the pallet so the layer above it leans toward the center. However, position batteries with side posts facing inward to prevent contact with metal trailer sides and avoid terminal contact with other side post batteries. Make this first layer of batteries as level as possible, but at least place shorter batteries toward the center of the layer and keep in mind that taller batteries should be reserved for the top layer. On top of the first layer of batteries, place waffle board or cardboard of a type and quantity sufficient to prevent punctures. Load the second layer of batteries upright, 
packed tightly together, post positioned toward the outside of the pallet unless they're side posts. And once again, cover with waffle board or cardboard sturdy enough to prevent punctures. Load the third layer of batteries upright, tight together, following the same guidelines. Once this is complete, it's time for step two, review the load. Make sure no batteries are hanging over the side of the cardboard separators. Always make sure batteries are tight against each other. Confirm batteries are not stacked on their side. Side stacking could result in terminals touching and may cause a short and fire. Always stack batteries upright. Ensure side terminal batteries are stacked so the posts are facing away from each other to avoid the terminals touching and not facing towards the outside of the pallet to protect the terminal from external contact. Make sure cardboard separators have sufficient strength to prevent punctures by battery posts, therefore avoiding battery damage or short circuits in transit. Confirm two sheets of honeycomb or thin cardboard are placed on top of any layer containing marine or golf cart batteries. Just note this isn't necessary on the top layer of the pallet load. It's preferable to place stud post marine batteries and any taller batteries on the top layer of a pallet. In order to prevent short circuits, make sure metal objects are not allowed to come into contact with battery posts. Your employer can provide you with a diagram of a properly palletized load of used batteries, which is available from the Battery Council International or your battery supplier. With step two complete, it's time for step three, consider special cases. Damage batteries that are not visibly leaking and from which fluid is not likely to leak during normal conditions of transit should be placed in strong, clear poly bags of at least 6 mil in thickness. These bagged batteries should be properly closed with an adjustable plastic tie and loaded and secured in the middle of a layer of batteries. Batteries that are visibly leaking need to be handled separately. You must securely contain these batteries in non-metal, acid-resistant containers that are capable of containing any leaking acid. When shipping batteries overseas, the top layer of cardboard must be honeycomb cardboard. Now let's move on to step four, confirm contents. Before preparing for transport, confirm that only lead acid batteries are placed on pallets for return. Other chemistries of batteries, including but not limited to nickel cadmium and lithium ion batteries, cannot be accepted by lead battery recyclers and are dangerous to process at these facilities. Other miscellaneous materials, such as aluminum cans, can cause dangerous conditions at battery recycling facilities and should be avoided. Having properly loaded and checked the pallet, it's time for step five, stretch wrap the load. Start with the stretch wrap turned sideways and create a rope effect. Wrap the rope around the top layer at least twice. Note that the stretch wrap works best if pulled tight before stretching it around the corners. Still using the rope effect, wrap the top layer at least twice again, crossing over the top each time to form an X pattern over the batteries and using the pallet below as an anchor at each corner. This will pull the batteries toward the center to prevent batteries from falling off the pallet. Hold the stretch wrap open and wrap around the bottom layer at least twice, being sure to catch the edges of the pallet. After placing cardboard over the top layer of batteries, wrap plastic in the open position around the top layer at least twice or as many times as needed to secure the load and then tear at the last corner. As you get your pallet of batteries ready, follow proper procedures to make sure you correctly secure the load for safe transportation. A load that is properly prepared helps improve the safety of others and maintains a safer environment. Hi, welcome back to our automotive product store. Recycling lead acid batteries is a key service we provide to our customers here at the shop. Being a part of the recycling process is important to us and the environment. It's also important that we remember a few things when loading and securing used lead acid batteries being shipped for recycling. When loading lead acid batteries into a transport vehicle, there are a few requirements to remember. The wrap pallets of batteries should be loaded or braced in the transport vehicle to prevent damage and short circuits in transit. This essentially prevents lateral, forward, and aft movement and batteries breaking free from the pallets or tipping over. No other hazardous materials may be transported in the same vehicle. Any other material loaded in the same vehicle must be blocked, braced, or otherwise secured to prevent contact with or damage to the batteries. When loading a transport vehicle and transporting batteries, all of these steps are equally important. They help to maintain your own safety, highway safety, and the environment. 
Thank you for your time today, and please ask your employer if you have any questions about this presentation.